legislators come up, I'd like to, to have them go ahead and be seated. Uh, so this is our first legislative update of the year here at the chamber. Uh, I'm very excited to do this. Uh, there's a lot to talk about. And the chamber loves the opportunity to uh, come out and host events like this. So I'd like to introduce our, our esteemed panel tonight. We have our state senator, Mr. Rick Gertler. We have uh, state representative David Bean. And uh, David is our speaker pro tem, which is a really fancy way of saying second in command in the state house. We've got our state representative, Ken Upchurch, Mr. Mr. Chairman of Transportation. And then we have our two newest state representative elects. We have representative elect Josh Branscombe, who's going to be taking over for Jeff Hoover. And we have representative elect Shane Baker, who's going to be taking over for Tommy Turk. So, uh, I want to thank them for coming out, and, and uh, a few people we do want to thank before we start tonight. So, first and foremost, I want to thank the Harbor Restaurant and J.D. Hamilton back there. Let's give them a big round of applause. So, this event was supposed to actually happen at the Oak Hill House, and then they called us and told us that a pipe burst up on the third floor and uh, they were going to have some extensive water damage. So because of that, I called JV in a dead spin panic and asked him if we could host the event out here. And of course, as always, JV said yes. So thank you very much. Uh, Kathy Pittman, I don't know where Kathy's at. She's running around here somewhere. Kathy is awesome. She has helped put together uh, a wonderful event tonight. And they've got a brand new chef out here. His name's Chef Cody No. So Chef Cody's brand new, and he has put some really good looking stuff back here. Some of this stuff's not even on the menu. So uh, enjoy, help yourselves, and uh, thank you to JD and the Heart of the Restaurant. I uh, also want to thank uh, Windstream for sponsoring tonight's event. Uh, Windstream has come on as one of our world-class sponsors this year, and uh, we really appreciate them. Uh, they have done a fantastic job for the Chamber in supporting us, and again, just want to thank Windstream for sponsoring tonight's event. Uh, so I will also mention uh, we are live on Facebook right now, so let's act like let's act like uh, let's, let's act like it's 2020. I guess I don't know instead of 2019. Uh, but we're live on Facebook. There's still some people out there that you know they don't want to come out and meet in, in, in person, and that's okay. We want to be able to uh, welcome them to this legislative update. We want them to have the opportunity to hear from our legislators too, because I got to tell you guys. Has there ever been a time in the last 20 years where the state legislature has felt more important than it does right now? It feels incredibly important. And I believe that they're going to have some really interesting things that they're going to want to talk about tonight. So here's how I'm going to break it down. I'm going to break it down into three parts. And uh, we don't really have a, a flow to this anymore than what they want to talk about in each one of these parts. But I thought we would do a legislative update uh, and maybe a session overview. So some of the sitting uh, current legislators, I thought maybe they might want to talk a little bit about the past session, and then obviously maybe talk about anything interesting that might be coming up in the upcoming session that they might feel comfortable talking about. Um, the next thing we can do is I'd like to give a few minutes to our two newest uh, representative elects just to introduce themselves and for everybody here to get to know them more. The business community is a very powerful ally in Pulaski County, and we want to get behind and we want to support Shane and and, and, uh, and uh, Josh, and we want to just do everything we can to support them. So I wanted to give them a, a chance just to introduce themselves to everybody and put them on the spot and just, you know, let them say hi to everybody. And then uh, I thought we might do just a quick Q&A from the audience. Uh, some questions and answers, or maybe just some general thoughts or concerns or things of that that some people might have. So if you don't have a question, maybe you have a well-represented uh, and, and appropriate you know, comment you'd like to make. We're going to keep this professional, obviously, but I'm sure there are some questions and thoughts that people might have. And if you want to do those uh, tonight, I'm sure that they would be happy to answer a few questions. So our goal is to be done by about 7 o'clock. So uh, anyway, grab a drink, get up, move around, but obviously at the same time, let's try to keep the chatter down and be respectful to our legislators who are talking to the people here that are here to listen. There's some people that got here very early, guys, and they got here to listen. 
So let's do let's, let's be respectful to them and, and do everything we can to let them them hear, okay? So um, I'm gonna sneak by you real quick, Shane. Can I do that? I kinda of box myself. I box myself in. I box myself in. Okay, so there are two microphones here. And they're both wireless, not the ceiling. I'm going to start down here. And if anybody would like to open up, again, at this point, this is where we're just going to talk a little bit about a legislative update. Maybe we start at the Senate side, go to the House, anything, and, and then anything about the upcoming session that you guys would like to talk about. I'm assuming he's not me to start. I do. I was going to do something until I heard about this on Facebook, and I don't think it play too well on Matt Jones, Kentucky Sports Radio, so I won't do that tonight. Uh, the session last time uh, got pretty well halted about 1st of March. About the time we sent the uh, budget over to David, he sent it back. And uh, so then we knew we was in a little bit of trouble. Uh, so we went to working on the budget again, and as you all well know, we've got a budget again this year. We only did a one-year budget because we didn't have a clue what this was going to happen. Uh, the things that uh, coming up, you know, I've heard from all of you. Some of you have not been too nice, not about me, but about somebody else. Uh, and. Uh, I think one of the things that we got to work on, you know, a state of emergency was not put in to have somebody in charge for six months. It was put in for an earthquake or a, or a tornado or something of that nature with no communications for four or five days. We don't need Republican or Democrat, somebody up at the office deciding for six months or a year, that, that's what we're gonna do. We're, we are three branches of government, and we need to use all three branches of government. Now, some people say that's political. No, it ain't political. The political part's coming from the other side. We beg to be a part of this conversation, and we've not been a part of it. Uh, now, what's coming, I hope and pray, uh, that we put a bill in, and I understand it, and, and I do rely on uh, representing me a lot. I really do. I hope and pray we can go. There's a BR 130. The young lady, Savannah Madden. I haven't read it fully, but I will tell you this I'm for 15 days emergency, then it's got to come back to all of us, not just one man or one person. And then uh, I'm hoping that I think it takes a comp, that's a bill, and we can do that. We can do emergency on it. He'll be taught. It'll go in force on April the 1st or March the 31st or whatever day it is. Uh, the second thing I hope is that we come back with a constitutional amendment that we'll be able to call ourselves in. I get, I, get, I get called all the time, I get text messages asking me, why are y'all staying at home? Why don't you go up there and do something? I wish I could. Uh, I'd go see Mark Haney if I could. Uh, and let him go with me. He looks like Earl Rogers, we might get something done. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but the thing about it is, this, this can't go on and keep doing this. We got to have the legislators involved in making the decisions based upon economic development, tourism. JD, where you at? Yeah, tourism. He's back there asleep. Uh, the, the, all the things we need to be done. I, I'm talking about the tourism, economic Good development. Good yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, but that's. I, I really believe we have to take our state back. And let's, uh, let's let three branches of government do it, not one man. Today I, I had to sit in on Zoom, first time I ever Zoomed in my life. I didn't do it video because my jaws are already big enough and I can't hold it right to do that. So I did it audio. And the thing about it is the decisions that were made economic development-wise was made by one person. 
the decisions that was made on other things as far as tourism or was made by one person. So we got to take it. We, we got to do it. And that's where I'm at. Now, I may get in trouble, but that's fine. I've been in trouble all my life. Uh, but uh, that's where I, I hope to see what's coming. Last time, it got thrown into the Kelter because of we didn't have a clue what was doing after March 1st. So anyway, here's here's the man that's in charge of it all. If anybody's got any tough questions, I call David Mead. I don't know who you all call. <laughs> he calls a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, this year, as Rick said, it's been a very difficult year. We started out, this was a budget year, and in those budget years, that's our primary concern. That's what we spend most of our time working on. We started on that early last year, of November, December, on this year's budget. Uh, so when we came into session, we were more prepared and we were rolling along. We, we came up with a budget that we were very happy with, very pleased with. We got to do some things that we hadn't got to do in the past. We had a record, uh, record amount of investment in education. We had a record amount of investment in child welfare and several other areas across the state. So we were looking forward to being able to, to put that into motion. We passed that in the House. We sent it over to the Senate. They had some changes and some additions to it. Uh, we were gonna come back with a very good budget. And as Rick said, as they got ready to send it over to the house, we ended up pulling it back. And uh, the reason for that is all this hit. We didn't know what was going to happen. The uh, projections started to tank. So we came back in, we had to do a budget reduction. We, we pretty much held everything steady across the board from last budget cycle. Uh, we ended up actually opening up the previous budget as well to do a budget reduction. And that's one thing that I, I do want to talk about tonight. As you've heard probably a few weeks ago, the governor talked about the surplus that we have right now in the state and uh, was talking about the, the cuts that he had made and that was helpful. And, and it was helpful to an extent. However, what you need to understand is we were projected to have a, a much larger surplus than we have right now. So we actually have a loss. Uh, we lost quite a bit of money coming into this new budget cycle. And we opened up the budget ourselves and did a drastic budget reduction to help us save that much money. So the legislature uh, did that budget reduction plus the losses that we've had uh, throughout this surplus and then his reductions in his cabinet helped to sustain us where we are. But we also have to remember too that Kentucky has an antiquated tax system and we continue to tax unemployment. So right now we're seeing revenue coming in from the $600 that the, the federal government was giving on unemployment and the unemployment that folks are drawing from the state as well. So that's coming back as, as taxable income. Once all that is cut off, you're gonna see that the state really start to suffer even more. And I believe that as we go through the rest of this year, when businesses aren't able to open up fully and all those things stop, the, the unemployment money stops coming in from the federal government, we're gonna see our numbers drastically go down. And so that's why we ended up doing that one year budget is because we don't know what we wanna prepare for next year. So as we come back in in 2021, we will do a, another one year budget to get us through this next, the rest of this budget cycle. Uh, but we also had some other things on the table that we were really excited about doing. We, had, we were doing welfare reform. Uh, and that is the welfare reform that we're doing. You continue to hear that folks can't afford to go back to work because they're locked into the, the, the welfare that they're getting, the, the public assistance that they're getting. And the biggest thing that we hear is that they don't wanna go back to work because of the health care that they possibly could lose. So this year we came up with a plan that said, okay, we're, we're gonna take that, eliminate that need, because any of us would make that decision. We would always say, we're gonna take care of our family and the health of our family before we go, go back and make more money. We wanna make sure that we take care of them. So they shouldn't have to make that decision. So what we did is we said, we're gonna, develop a health care program in the state where if you come off of, of Medicare, Medicaid, you can roll onto this plan and we will start weaning you off of that. As you make more money, we will start reducing how much the payments are that we're paying to that health care program. And over, when you made a certain amount of money that you would be taken off of it, but you were able to phase back into working. We also put in some, some measures to make sure that we accounted for fraud. We were going to start tracking that, cracking down much harder on fraud and misuse of that public money. Uh, and we have, we've had that bill the past two years. We got it fine tuned this year, passed it through the House, got it to the Senate, it was prepared to be passed when all this hit. So I say all that because when we come back in 2021, that's gonna be one of our primary bills that you'll see is welfare reform. We're gonna continue working down that path. 
We're going to do the budget. And then, of course, when we come back in right now, we formed a work group in the House that is looking at 39A. You'll hear us talk a lot about that. 39A is the statute that gives the governor the emergency powers that he is operating under right now. And when we come back in 2021, you will see us do a drastic reform on that as well to bring him back into line. So that's where we are right now. And uh, hopefully we'll get to open up to questions in a little while. We'll get to talk some more about some things. Thank you, David. Thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of echo some of the previous comments about the session. Uh, it's probably the weirdest session that I've been involved in, and I've been involved in quite a few over the years, uh, having, you know, just basically putting the brakes on it right at the midway, midway session. And uh, the way we voted, voting remotely from our offices and uh, it was just one of those things that I think it, it was historical uh, the way we handled the session but I think the way we did it uh, and that, that we've got to give a lot of credit for our leadership on both the Senate and the House of how we was able to you know circle the wagons and, and uh, figure out how we were going to get out of the session uh, by doing the one-year budget and uh, focusing on the things that, that really needed to be focused on and then uh, giving us some wiggle room when we come back next session. I know uh, Rick and, and uh, David have both talked about uh, 39A uh, and that has to do with the, the powers of the governor. Uh, you know, we have got, and it's one of the biggest questions that, that I have, is what are you gonna do to stop this guy? You know, what are you gonna do, what are you gonna do? I spent a lot of my time explaining uh, to folks that when the legislature is not in session, we really don't have any power. Uh, and so the only power we have over this, uh, over any administration, is when we're in session and we're able to pass legislation uh, to rein in, you know, whatever we disagree with. But this this governor, I think, has gone well above and beyond uh, some of the things that any of us would have done. Uh, just for example, you know, you had the school systems, you know, just about ready to go back to school with uh, in-person school, and uh, you know, they've given them the, the plans, and you know, all the superintendents and schools, the super, uh, principals had gone through this process of planning how we were going to have in-person instruction, and then two weeks before or a week before school was supposed to start. Oh, by the way, we're not going to have in-person classes until the 29th. And I'm the father of an 11-year-old whose first day of school was today uh, using the Google Classroom platform. And he's pretty technologically savvy. Uh, I consider myself somewhat savvy, but what concerns me uh, a great deal is those students out there, number one, whose parents uh, who don't really care if they go to school or not, they're just sending them there for daycare. Uh, your underprivileged children, you know, what kind of education are we going to give them over the next 28 days? And then, if at 28 days, the, uh, or at September 28, the, the cases continue to be in the six, seven, eight hundred level, you know, what's this governor going to do? And he's doing it all by himself. And that's the point that we, uh, David and, and uh, Rick have, have all made. You know, we asked the governor, leadership, both House and Senate, asked him to involve us in some of these decisions. And it's just like, we don't exist. So when we go back in session, you know, we need to revisit the, uh, the statutes that uh, give him that authority and then uh, make it clear to him that, you know, we're there for a reason because we're the ones who are having to answer to, to the public. And so I think that's one of the important things that, that we'll have to deal with. You know, there's a lot of issues. Uh, you know, I see some of the guys here from the transportation industry, of course, being chairman of transportation. Uh, that's one of the things that uh, I know is weighing heavily on them. Uh, you know, we, we've got, you know, budget cuts in the transportation road fund uh, that they're concerned about. And uh, so we've got to figure out how we go forward. So uh, there's a lot of that that's going to be going on between now and, and January. And then as we start putting this budget together, uh, 
going forward. So that's basically the end of my comments. I'm going to pass the mic on down and uh, or give it to Bobby, and, and uh, but we'll be happy to answer any questions that you all might have at the proper time. Thank you all very much. I'm sure there's going to be going to be some questions for you guys, but that was a good that was a good start anyway. Uh, so uh, again, we have two new, it's kind of unprecedented to have two freshmen uh, state representatives from representing the same area coming in at the same time. That's that's a, that's a unique uh, opportunity for us and, and it's important that they get to know our community uh, and everybody and especially our business community. So uh, I thought it would be a good idea. Just introduce yourselves. A lot of these people probably know you guys, but they don't. So let them know who you are. Maybe talk about some of the priorities, why you ran, things you want to focus on when you get to, uh, when you get to Frankfurt. So, uh, Josh, is that okay? Sure. Are you right. next? Yeah. Uh, I'm Josh Branscomb. I represent District 83, which is uh, Pulaski, uh, Southwestern Park, Pulaski, Russell, Cumberland, and Clinton. But uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself with Bobby. Appreciate you guys putting this together. This is actually something that uh, we really, when we were campaigning, we didn't get to do. Uh, right about the time we were starting our door-to-door, -door, about to start door-to-door, -door, is when COVID hit. So we didn't get the opportunity to really get out and get to meet, meet a lot of people and, and uh, really get to introduce yourself. So what I'll probably do is just tell you a little bit about myself and uh, tell you why I ran, and that'll, that'll lead on into some of the things that that uh, that I believe in. But. Um, Born and, born and raised in Russell County. Um, we, uh, my family owns a construction business, family owned construction business, business branch and construction company, but uh, graduated uh, from uh, Georgetown College. After that, uh, went to Eastern Kentucky University and earned a degree in construction management. You know, I was blessed. I got to come back home and I had an opportunity there to come back home and work in our family business. And so I uh, really, really have enjoyed that. Uh, married my high school sweetheart, uh, Kara. She's here tonight, and uh, we'll be married uh, 12 years here in two weeks. So I remember that. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's, hey, yeah. <laughs> and even better, it's Facebook official, right? <laughs> uh, but no, we're blessed. I mean, we, I have two, uh, two uh, awesome kids, Porter Grace, she's nine years old, and Knox, he's uh, six years old, currently going through the uh, trying to figure the whole school thing out, learning virtual, and uh, you know they're adapting, but it's just it's hard to replace that in person, um, you know, in person uh, teaching. My wife is a teacher, so she's going through that as well. But but anyway, uh, you know, jumping forward, uh, this past fall when Representative Hoover uh, decided that he was not going to be running for re-election, um, I had some people ask me, "Would you consider running?" And honestly, it was something that. I can also say I, I never really considered. Um, I didn't didn't say no, but I was like, you know, I, I don't know if that's if that's what I would like to do. But more people kept asking, and, and I, I really got to thinking about it. And the, one of the things that that really drove me to making this decision was um, growing up, I was always taught, you know, try to give back to your community, try to serve your community, whether that's on a board or whether that's through your church. Do something to give back to your community and try to make try to make a difference. That was one thing. The second was my kids. Um, how could I? What are going to look like? What are the things that I can do to make that difference? Uh, so, obviously, talked about with my wife. I told Kara. I said, unless you're one hundred percent on board with this, there is absolutely no way I'll do it because everybody knows how it is. I mean, you're going to get you know ran through the ringer. So. Uh, you know, she called me one day. She said, "I think you should do it." She said, "You, um, I know you." She said, "I think you'll regret the rest of your life if you don't give it a shot." And so here we are, eight months later, or whatever it is, um, uh, from the day we uh, signed the papers, and, and uh, here we are. But one of the things that you know, Russell County in our area here in our district that we see is who go to college and they don't they don't come back. And you hear, you hear sometimes, and you hear this said, that, well, there just wasn't opportunities there for me. To me, my goal is to make sure that when my kids graduate and their families who live in my district, who live here in Pulaski County, that there's opportunities for them 
if my kids decide to leave and don't and they don't come back, I don't want it to be because there wasn't an opportunity for them here. I want it to be for another reason. Okay? And so that was one of the things that, that really drove me to, to get into to get into this and to uh, see if I can make a difference. Uh, how do we do that? Obviously, business, being pro-business, job creation is very important. Uh, we have to provide those opportunities and give them a reason to stay. And that's not just providing jobs, but good paying jobs, very broad jobs where there's a lot of different opportunities. Um, so that's very important to me. Uh, agri agriculture, uh, I live on a farm, I'm a farmer. Uh, one of the things that we as farmers always want to do is make sure is that we always want to pass down to our the next generation, you know, our farms. But in order to do that, you have to make sure that your farm is successful. And so making sure that we're taking care of our farmers, giving them every opportunity to succeed is something I'm very passionate about. Tourism. And JD's back here. Uh, appreciate it, JD. Thanks for thanks for opening everything up for us tonight. But you know, uh, uh, tourism, very important. It's, it's a huge impact. The four counties in my district are all Lake Counties. So it's a, it's, a, it's a huge economic driver for our area. And that's something that we have to focus on and keep promoting uh, tourism um, as an as a economic development tool. Um, and you know, la I mean, lastly, one of the things that I campaigned on was the uh, opioid epidemic. I think that's something that every person in this room, it touches whether that's through your business, whether that's through your family, uh, someone, just a friend that you may know, it touches every single one of us in this room. There's been a lot of great legislation in the past couple of years that's been passed to help with that. Um, I seen the other day where seven, between 2017 and 2018, uh, overdoses actually dropped 15%. 2019, it went up 5%. So that's something that even though, I'm not gonna say it's been pushed to the side because of COVID, but we have to stay focused on that and keep fighting that battle because it touches every single one of us, it touches our families, and it touches our businesses. So I'm looking forward to uh, I'm looking forward to January. There's going to be a lot of challenges, as 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 you've heard and probably are going to hear. But you know, with challenges, I see a lot of great opportunities for us to get better and to keep improving and um, make this state a great place to live. I appreciate everyone. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. I'm glad I got to see some of my constituents and other folks in my district. And uh, it's a shame that during campaigning we didn't get that opportunity, but I really appreciate the opportunity to serve. And uh, as always, for anything I can do, please let me know to help. I'm Shane Baker. I grew up here in Nancy, in, in the Nancy community, a little west of here. I now live in eastern Pulaski County. I've spent most of my life, actually, um, in Somerset. But I, I'll represent the eastern part of Pulaski County and western Laurel County. Uh, my, my wife of 20 years is a teacher here at Somerset. I see Mr. Lively and Mr. Richardson here. I know you guys have had a little overtime work going on lately, and I appreciate you guys being able to come out and join us tonight, as well as the rest of you. It's a great privilege to be able to serve the people of Pulaski, Laurel County, but truthfully, the people across the, uh, the Commonwealth. As I talk to people throughout the campaign, I will represent eastern Pulaski and western Laurel County. But when someone's an elected official on the state level, we represent all of Kentucky. The decisions that we make, the commitments that we make, will affect each and every one of you. And I'm honored to have that opportunity to serve and to represent you. Uh, my wife is a first grade teacher. I cannot remember how long she's been there, 17, 18 years. And, and Miss Haney, I know, was, was a teacher. I'm sure there are a number of teachers here in, in the room. And you know, retirement's been a hot button issue for a number of years. It's a concern, it's a growing concern. It affects everyone, not just the educators, not just the, the school board, the superintendent, but if you're a taxpayer in Kentucky, if you have a child in Kentucky, if you hope to have a business in Kentucky, it affects you. And it's something that we have to address. It's something that the legislature and the previous governor uh, tackled. It was a challenge, it was a hot button issue, but something. it's a problem that's not going away. It's a problem that has to be fixed. It's a problem that must be fixed or we will all suffer the consequences of that. That's one of the reasons that I, that I became engaged. Another reason I became engaged is, is, as a Christian, I've heard all my life that Christians should not be involved in politics. 
Christians need to step aside and let someone else do that. They should not get into the mud. If that happens, then who gets to make the decisions? Those people that don't share those values. So therefore, I'm committed to uphold my Christian values in Frankfurt as I do at home. Uh, that's a challenge that each of us have. And that's one of the reasons we need you to, to hold us accountable, to call us on those things when we are getting close to a line where we don't need to be. But we have, Lord and I are blessed with two sons. Gabe is getting ready to turn 15 in a couple weeks. Uh, he's at soccer practice tonight. I think Caleb is at cross-country practice, so my wife couldn't be with us. Uh, I am blessed to have my work family here. Some of the folks from Transamerica uh, made the trip up, and thank you guys so much for being here. <coughs> but it is a privilege to serve as a preacher. I, I've served in, our ministry, in student ministry for nearly 20 years here in Somerset. It's something that's been a passion of mine in, in making a difference in serving the community and helping with young people. And those people need, need people on all levels to pour into their lives. This is just a different path, another opportunity to do that. It looks much different than anything I've ever been accustomed to before. I was my vocational student pastor. I was a small business owner for 21 years. So I have a number of different uh, things in my background. But the reality is I don't know it all. I'll never know it all, nor does anyone at this table. So we rely on you being professionals and the, and the uh, experts in your field, uh, Mr. Haney, to help guide us when it comes to agriculture-related things, to help, help us to understand uh, some of those needs, some of those challenges, Dr. Castle in education, and Mr. Richards and Mr. Lively, and uh, everyone else in your respective fields. So we want to make sure that we have an open door. And I'm glad, uh, Bobby and, and the Chamber, for this opportunity to make these connections. So when, when things do arise and you have questions, concerns, frustrations, you have my number. You can come, come call on me anytime. I'd be glad to listen and respond best I possibly can. But I look forward to hearing from you guys, meeting more of you, and serving over the next two years. It's a short time, Josh, we have to get right back at it, <laughs> uh, which is not an exciting thing. And this was a difficult campaign season, not getting to meet people. I think people deserve transparency. They deserve the opportunity to meet those people who are asking for their vote. And this affords us that opportunity a little bit late. We're grateful for it nonetheless. Thank you so much, Bobby. I appreciate it.